Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. The Quiet Man. The Quiet Man is a 1952 Technicolor American romantic comedy drama film directed by John Ford. It stars John Wayne, Maureen O'Hara, Barry Fitzgerald, Ward Bond, and Victor McLaglen. The screenplay by Frank S. Nugent was based on a 1933 Saturday Evening Post short story of the same name by Morris Walsh. Later published as part of a collection, The Green Rushes. The film is notable for Winton Hock's lush photography of the Irish countryside and a long, climactic, semi comic fist fight. It was an official selection of the 1952 Venice Film Festival. The Quiet Man won the Academy Award for Best Director for John Ford, his fourth, and for Best Cinematography. In 2013, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Plot in the 1920s, Sean Thornton, an Irish-born American from Pittsburgh, travels to Ireland to reclaim his family's farm and his birthplace in Innisfree. He meets and falls in love with the fiery Mary-Kate Danaher, the sister of the bullying, loud-mouthed landowner squire, Red, Will Danaher. Danaher, who had wanted the farm himself, is angry that the widow Tulane accepts Sean's bid, and retaliates by refusing consent for his sister to marry. Several town locals, including the Catholic priest, Father Lonigan, conspire to trick him into believing that the wealthy widow Tulane wants to marry him, but only if Mary Kate is no longer living in his house. After learning the truth on Sean, and Mary Kate's wedding day, an enraged Will refuses to give his sister her dowry which is made up of a large sum of money, and her family possessions passed down from her mother. Sean, unschooled in Irish customs, cares nothing about the dowry, but to Mary Kate the dowry represents her independence, identity, and pride. She feels passionately and intensely that the dowry is hers and is needed to validate her marriage to Sean. Angered and shamed by Sean's refusal to confront her brother and demand what is legally hers, she brands him a coward, and, despite living together, they are quickly estranged as husband and wife. In the morning, they find that others in the village had visited Will and pressured him to return Mary-Kate's furniture, but not her money. Sean had been a boxer in the United States a heavyweight challenger known as Trooper Thorn. After accidentally killing an opponent in the ring, Sean hung up his gloves, vowing never to fight again. This is known to only one person in the village, the Church of Ireland minister, the Rev. Playfair, who once upon a time had been a lightweight champion, and so understands Thornton's internal conflict over the fight. In an attempt to force Sean, to confront Will, Mary-Kate leaves him and boards a train departing Castle Town and headed to Dublin. Sean hears that she left for the station and drags her off the train. Followed by the crowding townspeople, he forces her to walk with him the five miles back to Innisfree and directly to the Danaher farm. Sean demands that Will hand over her diary. When Will refuses, he throws Mary Kate back at Will, saying that, no dowry, no marriage, is their custom not his, shocking the two, and shaming Will into finally paying the monetary part of his sister's dowry. Sean promptly throws the money into a nearby furnace which Mary Kate holds open, showing that Mary Kate never cared about the money, but only what it represented. After a proud Mary Kate announces so all can hear that she will now return home to prepare his supper and departs, Will punches Sean, and a long, memorable fistfight ensues between the two, drawing crowds from miles around. 
They slug it out through the village, stop for a drink, brawl again, then, somewhat drunk, admit grudging mutual respect and the two return to Sean and Mary Kate's home for supper, where it is implied the rift is healed. Sean regains Mary Kate's love and respect. In the aftermath it is shown that Will and the widow Tulane began courting, and peace is returned to in is free. Cast John Wayne as Sean Thornton Maureen O'Hara as Mary Kate Danaher Barry Fitzgerald as Michael Lean Og Flynn Victor McLaglen as Squire Redwill Danaher Ward Bond as Father Peter Lonergan Mildred Natwick as the widow Sarah Tulane Francis Ford as Dan Tobin Arthur Shields as Rev Cyril Playfair Eileen Crow as Elizabeth Playfair Charles Fitzsimmons as Hugh Forbes James Fitzsimmons as Father Paul Sean McClory as Owen Glynn Emily E.B. as Maeve Campbell Jack McGowan as Ignatius Feeney Philip Stainton as Anglican Bishop May Craig as Fishwoman with Basket at Station Paddy O'Donnell as Railway Porter Eric Gorman as Costello Engine Driver Kevin Lawless as Engine Fireman Joseph O.D. as Moliny, Train Guard Tony Canzoneri as Boxing Second Frank Baker as Man in Bar Ruth Clifford as Mother Maureen Coyne as Dan Tobin's Daughter Island Mimi Doyle as Dan Tobin's Daughter USA Ken Curtis as Dermot Fahey Douglas Evans as Ring Physician Charles Ferguson as Dana her brother Robert Foy as driver of cart across river Sam Harris as General D.R.O. Hutswell as Guppy John Horan as man at railway station David Hughes as police constable Billy Jones as bugler Tiny Jones as Noel Colin Kenny as pub extra Patrick Wayne as boy on wagon at horse race Michael Wayne as teenage boy at races Tony Wayne as teenage girl at races Melinda Wayne as girl on wagon. At horse race May Marsh as father Paul as mother Jim Moran as Ruth Thatcher Jim McVeigh as man. Following cart across river Harry Tenbrook as police sergeant Hannon Harry Tyler as Pat Cohan. Al Murphy as boxing referee Hank Warden as boxing trainer Michael O'Brien as Musha Musha man. Pat O'Malley as Man in Bar Frank O'Connor as Ringside Photographer Webb Overlander as Hugh Bailey Bob Perry as Trooper Thorns Ringside Trainer Darla Ridgway as Girl Freddie Ridgway as Boy Philip Stainton as Anglican Bishop Jack Roper as Tony Gardello Brick Sullivan as Townsman Production the film was something of a departure for Wayne and Ford, who were both known mostly for westerns and other action-oriented films. It was also a departure for Republic Pictures, which backed Ford in what was considered a risky venture at the time. It was the only time the studio, known for low-budget B-movies, released a film that would receive an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Ford read the story in 1933 and soon purchased the rights to it for $10. The story's author was paid another $2,500 when Republic bought the idea, and he received a final payment of $3,750 when the film was actually made. Republic Pictures agreed to finance the film with O'Hara and Wayne starring and Ford directing but only if all three agreed to first film a western with Republic. They did, and after completing Rio Grande, they headed for Ireland to start shooting. One of the conditions that Republic placed on Ford was that the film run under two hours. However, the finished picture was two hours and nine minutes. When screening the film, for Republic executives, Ford stopped the film at approximately two hours in. On the verge of the climactic fist fight, Republic executives relented and allowed the film to run its full length. It was one of the few films that Republic filmed in Technicolor. Most of the studio's other color films were made in a more economical process known as Truckolor. 
The film employed many actors from the Irish theatre, including Barry Fitzgerald's brother, Arthur Shields, as well as extras from the Irish countryside. And it is one of the few Hollywood movies in which the Irish language can be heard. Filming commenced on June 7, 1951. All of the outdoor scenes were shot on location in Ireland in County Mayo and County Galway. The inside scenes were filmed toward the end of July at the Republic Studios in Hollywood. The story is set in the fictitious community of Innisfree. This is not the same as the Lake Isle of Innisfree, a place in Loch Gill on the Sligo Leitrim border made famous by poet William Butler Yeats, which is a tiny island. Many scenes for the film were actually shot in and around the village of Kong, County Mayo, on the grounds of Kong's Ashford Castle. Kong is now a wealthy small town and the castle a five-star luxury hotel. The connections with the film have led to the area becoming a tourist attraction. In 2008, a pub opened in the building used as the pub in the film. The pub hosts daily reruns of the film on DVD. The Quiet Man Fan Club holds its annual general meeting in Ashford Castle. Other locations in the film include Thorbally Lee Co. Galway, home of poet W.B. Yeats. For a period, Ballyglunan Railway Station near Tomb Co. Galway, which was filmed as Castle Town Station, and various places in Connemara Co. Galway and Co. Mayo. Among those are Lettergesh Beach, where the horse race scene was filmed, the Quiet Man Bridge, signposted off the N59 road between Marm Cross and Ooktarad and the White O'Morn Cottage. The latter is located on R336 south of Marm, but has long ago fallen into ruin. The film also presents Ford's depiction of an idealized Irish society with no social divisions based on class or religion. The Catholic priest, Father Lonigan, and the Protestant Rev. Playfair maintain a strong friendly relationship throughout the film, which represented the norm. In what was then the Irish Free State, the only allusions to Anglo-Irish animosity occur after the happy couple is married, and a congratulatory toast expresses the wish that they live in national freedom. And before the final Donnybrook when Thornton demands his wife's dowry from Danaher. Danaher asks Hugh Forbes, who had been commander of the local Irish Republican Army unit during the fight to expel the British, so the IRA is in this too, ah, to which Forbes replies, if it were, not a scorched stone of your fine house would be standing. Music Ford chose his friend, Hollywood composer Victor Young, to compose the score for the film. Young sprinkled the soundtrack with many Irish airs such as The Rakes of Malio and The Wild Colonial Boy. One piece of music, chosen by Ford himself, is most prominent, the melody The Isle of Innisfree, written not by Young, but by the Irish policeman, songwriter Richard Farrelly. The melody of the I Love In Us Free, which is first heard over the opening credit sequence with Ashford Castle in the background, becomes the principal musical theme of The Quiet Man. The melody is reprised at least 11 times throughout the film. The upbeat melody comically hummed by Michael Eno G. E. Flynn and later played on the accordion is The Rakes of Malio. A portion of the Irish version of The Wild Colonial Boy is played throughout the film. When Maureen O'Hara died in October 2015, her family stated she listened to music from The Quiet Man during her final hours. Critical Reception The Quiet Man has a 90% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes with the critical consensus stated as, director John Ford and star John Wayne depart the Western 
for the Irish countryside, and the result is a beautifully photographed, often comedic romance in popular culture. A kissing scene between Sean and Mary Kate is shown in E.T. the Extraterrestrial when E.T. watches television. E.T. is interested and moved by the scene, his telepathic contact with Elliot causes the boy to reenact it while he is at school with a girl, portrayed by a young Erica Eleniak. The film inspired Donny Brook, a 1961 Broadway musical. John Williams' score for the film 1941 borrows the rakes of Mallow motif from The Quiet Man. It is used to show the building violence between the soldiers and sailors. Irish author Des Michalet has written four books about the film. Home Media It was first released on DVD December 14, 1998 by Artisan Home Entertainment. It was also released four years later on a collector's edition DVD on October 22, 2002 by Artisan. The special features on this edition include The Making of the Quiet Man documentary with Leonard Maltin and The Joy of Ireland documentary with Maureen O'Hara and Andrew V. McLaglan and Remembering the Quiet Man montage. On January 22, 2013 Olive Films released The Quiet Man on DVD and for the first time on Blu-ray as a 60th anniversary special edition. It included the documentary, The Making of the Quiet Man, with Leonard Maltin. In 2010 there was a documentary called Dreaming the Quiet Man made about the journey, A Making of the Quiet Man. It was narrated by Gabriel Byrne, and had interviews with Peter Bogdanovich, Martin Scorsese, Charles F. Fitzsimmons, and Maureen O'Hara. It was released on DVD and Blu-ray for the first time on March 24, 2015. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.